Welcome again to another Functionized Podcast. This is your mad scientist, Jim. This podcast today is brought to you by Functionized Integrative Therapeutics. Get fit at Functionized. For all your health, wellness, personal, family, friend needs, become part of the team at Functionized Integrative Therapeutics, home of the most effective, efficient, and proven Fit Lab. Have no time to work out? 15 minutes a week is all you need to give them. Results are proven. Today we're going to be discussing nutrition, different diets, and how they all work and don't work. Let's cue up the music. And today our intro is by a team member who just released his single, Go, Matthew Schultz. Everyone here at Functionize succeeding at something. Are you next? We look forward to seeing you in here. We are joined today by Dr. Mike. We are joined today by Beauty Brains Bronze herself, Shantae. It's her show, so why shouldn't she be here? Before we get rocking and rolling, take a brief screenshot of today's show. Post it on your Facebook. Post it on your Instagram story. Tag us at Functionized, F-U-N-C-T-I-O-N-I-S-E-D, and we'll start following you. We'll DM you and be part of your ever-growing friend base. Another fun fact, Functionized is now an official word. Check it out in the Urban Dictionary. Check out our Facebook post, and you'll see that Functionized has a definition, sentences, it's for real. Remember to hashtag Functionized. So we've decided to take a bunch of diets, and i got to tell you, they all work, but they don't work. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Some individual here, Shantae. Yes. What about me? Got a competition coming up on August 17th. August 17th. And your body is already looking amazing. But, you know, we've been together for 19 years, and I still think you're amazing. It's because I carried your children. (laughs) (laughs) The transformation, though, that you're undergoing, you went from amazing last summer, still looking great in the meanwhile, but who's going to keep that appearance up on stage all the time? And you've adapted the diet that I've kind of written up for you, Mm -hmm. and do you think it's a way that you can literally live and track and swap macronutrients on different days for certain reasons for the rest of your life? For the rest of my life, no, I do not think that is feasible. Right. And that's a lot what diets really are. It is something that's unrealistic for a short period of time, though. You know, you've got August 17th, right? Yeah. And come August 18th, after you've had your box full of Dunkin' Donuts and fisting uh, margaritas. I'm kind of thinking Mexican. That's <laughs> So instead of posing for pizza, I'll be posing for tacos. I will be posing for tacos! (laughs) Yes! So we've got in front of us here a popular diet, uh, literally called the Pop Diet. And it's been made very popular, not by eating corn pops or Rice Krispies, snap crackle and pop. We're going to pop a crap ton of times during the show, are we not? Boom! Got it in. (laughs) So I've got it in front of me here. And I will upload this into the show notes for everybody to look at. And there is success on the pop diet. As in every diet, when you adhere to a diet specifically, you're going to succeed. But is it realistic? Is it a way that you can come up with? Yeah, maintain for the rest of your life. It also comes down to what to are you looking at for success. So looking in terms of weight loss, 100%, you can lose weight on any diet. 
when it gets to other diets, we'll call it more medically for fatigue or for feeling better. Mm -hmm. That gets a little bit more specific. You know, I wouldn't necessarily say a Twinkie diet will help your gut, but lose weight. Yes, if you do, we've talked about this before with the Twinkies. Of yeah, course. I'd say you can lose weight on anything. And the reason people often want to turn to diets is it seems like humans have an innate sense of laze and even self-defeat. It takes years to put on body fat. There's someone we've worked with before, and it's the same person, I will say. You know, hundreds of people is the same person. They gain a pound a month. That's it. Just one pound. Who cares? You gain a pound a month. I mean, you wake up in the morning, you're a little lighter. That's pretty much the evaporation of uh, water from breathing all night, uh, a little bit of sweat. Uh, you're a little bit lighter. By the end of the day, you're a little heavier. You drink a glass of water. Right now, you're could be a pound heavier than before you drank the glass of water, but true weight loss, and or weight gain in this case. But a lot of habits are unhealthy, and they're formed along the way, which become difficult to break. Hence the word habit. When people expect to lose 12 pounds, 20 pounds, 50 pounds, and 100 pounds instantly, it's just unrealistic. If it takes you a year now, to gain 12 pounds, two years to gain 24 pounds. Why in the world do you think that you're gonna lose those 24 pounds in the next week? I was just listening this morning, the, the NJ diet, the thing on 101.5. Mm. Go through this 40 day transformation, guaranteed lose 20 to 40 pounds. No pills or surgery. Yeah, really? In theory, it sounds great. <laughs> it loves it. And you know what? Who's not gonna sign up, spend their five, $6,000, they're gonna get those results, right? I know the company's been sued a lot for not getting those results <laughs> because there's little markers along the way and it's great, great marketing. You, know, you can also do the comparison of what is it, uh, The Greatest Loser or what was the name of that show? Uh, the Biggest Loser. Biggest, Biggest Loser. loser. Mm -hmm. Great example. I mean, those people, most of them lose a crap ton they of do. weight. They do. They all lost They drop, right? you know, 100 plus in. pounds. And then if you follow up a year later, almost all of them have already gone back to it. I mean, they started with excessive amounts of diet changes and exercise and then it was far from maintainable the cameras go off of them and they go <laughs> back to well they still have their kitchen supplied the same way they did previously right it, it, they're, they were on a starvation diet oh, 100%. and working over, themselves over like they're training, training to be Olympian so they're going to be injured and it's just going to be a metabolic mess but they lost weight a right. lot of it <laughs> crap uh, marketing works holy yeah, it's... crap on Batman I mean marketing works and really what it's marketing is intended to do is make your pockets lighter. So, hey, there's some weight loss. <laughs> <laughs> Makes your bank accounts smaller. So, hey, some metaphorical weight loss. Most of the pills and shakes that are out there, uh, what's that popular one uh, that everyone's telling me that they take? It's another MLM. I don't know. Thanks, guys, for the help. You yeah, exactly. we'll just Some of the brightest things. minds in the world. Yeah. I was going to hydroxycat. No, no, no. no. But. They're all brands. They're all the same kind of stuff. Exactly. But. They're filled with a lot of fillers, and the oils in there are rancid. Oh, yeah. They're using the vegetable oils. They're using the things that oxidize really quick. So now you're having a cellular catastrophe that you don't even realize. You're becoming inflamed now at this point. So what you are eating is not being absorbed. Not good, but people still run to it because they're being sold on it. Yes, you're going to lose the weight. It's Are you going to have a shake every day for the rest of your life and that's how you eat or shake for breakfast, a shake for lunch, and a sensible dinner? I promise you, that sensible dinner is going to be barbecue central with <laughs> beer to go with it because you're hungry, you're fiending for it. You can do Deep good. fried and butter. And... Mm. Well, that's <laughs> <laughs> All right, Texas. Bring out the butter and the bacon. All the nutritional supplements, creams, lotions, pills, powders, they're not re regulated by the FDA. Yeah, and so many times just the capsule that stuff is in has things like allergens and things people are sensitive yeah, to. Yeah, why does the stuff have to have the coloring of red or blue? I mean, it makes it look pretty. It's easier for the mind to take the red pill or the blue pill. Let's take them both and see what happens. <laughs> but since it's not regulated by the FDA, they don't have to be totally up front on their label, which is kind of scary. And the lo so the companies can't legally diagnose, treat, or cure any disease. But, according to ICD-10 codes, obesity is now a treatable condition that must first be diagnosed. So technically, they're giving you a cure-all, aren't they? And those cure-alls are the snake oils that the peddlers would peddle around back in the day, going from town to town, selling the, the uh, 
train to Ogdenville and Springfield. Simpsons, come on, people. I got you at Springfield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, your body is comprised of a variety of tissues, organs, liquids, bone, muscle, fat, and so forth, and weight loss isn't fat loss. So, if you've seen the experiment and done with myself and Dr. Mike here, we decided to see he can drop two weight classes. So it was two weight classes, right? Three. Three. Jeez. 27 pounds in five days. We call it 25. All right, so you answered that one. <laughs> <laughs> Again, there was nothing at all in a... And how much did you end up losing? Was it 20 pounds? I ended up losing 27. 27 pounds, and technically the... Three in days. five days, most of it was the last three days. Because mm-hmm. the first two days was, we'll call it water control. Right. And... Really, it was water, it was it was all, bowel. It was mostly all water and emptying the stomach. I still ate, but... Head. As I said, you know, as fun as it was, it's not something that's maintainable. Just because, you know, again, Jim, you went through the similar thing with your powerlifting competition. You had to lose a little bit of weight short period of time. Cool to do, but again, it's almost all water weight. So it's not a diet we'd look at as doing, like most of these, something long term. It's impossible to do. But yeah, you can lose a lot of weight short term. Of course. Not healthy. The short term weight that I lost, I mean, I was drained. I my cognitive function was gone. My physical function attitude was my optimistic <laughs> attitude was uh, yeah, my biggest supporter, I was like, Don't come, I'm fine. <laughs> Could have used the little uh, rah 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 in my corner. I would have found a sitter for the <laughs> I really would have. So, we've come to the agreement that even no matter what I say, she's coming anyway. We're cool with that. Here we go, Spartan next month. Aru. So, every book out there that you've probably read on your diet and tried, I'm going to tell you, it works. Did anyone hear me? I said it works. The keto diet, it works. Paleo, works. Mediterranean, South Beach, Atkins, Bulletproof. Pop diet. Weight Watchers, I mean, it all works. Name a diet. Straight up, it works. And each market, excuse me, each book on diets that you find on the market is some variation of some other diet book that sold copies previously. Mm-hmm. And there's a mini twist and spin on each book that comes out, so it can be unique and then you're not plagiarizing it exactly. If you grab any four or five random diets, you're going to notice very commonalities in all of them. Like, try to get someone who has an in depth look at it, explain the difference between paleo and keto. I mean, there's a lot of similarities. Yes, there's differences. Or Atkins versus South Beach. It comes down a lot to just brand recognition at a certain point. Of course. Um, personally, you know, politics aside, here's some politics. I'm an advocate of capitalism. <laughs> Everybody, I believe, should have the opportunity to succeed and live a life of happiness through hard work and determination. And if you have a round tire that works, why do you have to paint that stripe on it? Why does the front of the tire walls need to be altered. It looks good already, right? Why are you laughing at me, Shantae? Seriously. I mean, I'm going to get to my point in a second, because I actually have a point. People get bored with stuff. And when people get bored, she's still laughing. If you could only see her at 19 years, oh my goodness, it does not get old. I promise you, it really doesn't. (laughs) So, people get bored with stuff. And we thrive on changes as it happens daily. I mean, order comes from disorder, which is entropy, and this is a foundation of the entire universe in which we live in down to our very cellular level. But I'm going to challenge you. Yeah, both of you. Challenge Bring it. Gauntlet thrown. Boring's oh. good, okay? <laughs> your result of your every day leading up to now and tomorrow, you're going to be a result of every day and tomorrow you can be a result of every day leading up to now, plus today. So, we thrive on routine, but it's ironic that we're always distracted by that red shiny ball. The tire in your car looks good, but you want something different. That diet's been working for you, but this new book came out that's altering something. Or this new product is coming out that you want. If everything else has been working good, why change it for the sake of change? Change it if something's not working. You know, you got a flat tire, it needs to be round. If it's not round, you're not going anywhere (laughs) exactly wow metaphor deep (laughs) the physiology of the human body works in a particular manner our cells react to the environment around us and what we put in us they react to social situations sight sound we are objects of reaction we become what we react to if you let mold manifest in your environment eat your high glycemic sad diet, 
as a staple of what you eat every day and your job sucks, you're just unhappy and miserable person, there's a good chance over time you're not going to be the person you wanted to be. You'll be sick, unattractive, no one's going to be around you, and I'm going to be in your face about it here. You're going to be a drain into society due to your medical bills and have a funeral if you no people to attend. Straight up, that's a fact. <laughs> yeah. Boom. <laughs> it's true. But is this what you want to leave behind as your legacy? Is When you're a little kid, is this an vision for yourself when you're dreaming about being that firefighter, the baseball player, or football player, the Olympic medalist, owning your own thriving lemonade stand, which could be a big multinational corporation, whatever it is. I mean, whatever it is when you're a little kid or growing up, is that really what you truly aspired to be? Because if you don't live in that lifestyle, it's like with the secret, you know, people can roll their eyes, but the law of attraction works and you have to live that lifestyle. If you want to attract that red Lamborghini, you don't just lie in bed all day dreaming of a red Lamborghini, you need to do those things every day and put those thoughts out there and follow those thoughts every day to get that big red Lamborghini. I would like a Lamborghini. <laughs> red? Not red. That came from the shiny ball syndrome. It was. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're going from fat to fat, how is your true existence from a cellular level going to happen? You want to hit the golf ball straight? Stop changing your swing. Work on the swing that works over and over. Go straight. Swing that way. But how many people are out there tweaking their swing all the time? Consistency is the key to everything. Mm -hmm. So the same thing is going to happen with eating. Now, our oldest, for the longest time, still doesn't know what soda is. Like soda, soda. We give her the Zevia as a special drink. Yep. But she doesn't know what a can of Coke is. And she knows what it is. They see the trucks. They, they see it at the restaurant. <laughs> never. It's not like but she she's does not, not consuming it. There. She has never. She's not in McDonald's consumed. eating Big Macs, fries, the shake. Okay, now I can say the kids have never been to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> have they consumed large fries, burger, shakes, all that stuff? No. Of course. They've had the salad. Not well, for McDonald's. Just go. <laughs> I'm trying to make a point. You're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> Jim, don't ruin her show, okay? She's got a point here. Let it go. True. What's your point, Shantae? She disagrees. It's a product so. of my lifestyle. <laughs> right. <laughs> what my point is, the idea is to introduce habits to children from a small age. We, you know, we purchase only the foods that we know are healthy for them. This is what I thought we were doing, but I guess we have to have a talk after the podcast here. <laughs> Teach, I don't bring in McDonald's. <laughs> teach them how much to eat, when to eat, what not to eat, and hopefully when they leave the house, they're going to make the right decisions, and if they have questions, they come back to us later, and we can answer the questions and guide them right. But, I was talking to a woman the other day, what happens if the parents don't know? The parents are making all the wrong decisions. They're ingraining those habits into the child. They only know how to eat pro-inflammatory foods. They don't have the knowledge how to live functionized themselves. Out of habit, the parent's going to purchase these foods for the entire family. They're going to be bringing it in the house. The family becomes sick together. And believe it or not, it's not always genetics, even though they're blamed for the diseases that oftentimes families have. The cancers, heart disease. If anyone has heart disease in the family... Oh, it must be genetic. It has nothing to do with their eating the same food or the same right. lifestyle that's passed on They're all on eating plenty of pasta. They're all eating plenty of grains. They're all eating plenty of... Dairy, uh, the, you know, all the things that are pro-inflammatory here, they're all having high amounts of sugar, whether they believe it or not. Now, people tell me all the time, I don't eat much sugar. They track it for a day or two. Oh, uh, first thing you eat for yeah. breakfast, I have a bunch of granola in it with a banana in it, right. but no sugar. At the end of the day, it's 150 to 200 grams of sugar per mm -hmm. day, which there are tribes that don't eat that in an entire year. Yeah, a lot of the aboriginals, last thing I read was about 50 pounds of sugar a year, and that was mostly in the form of, like, honey and, you know, seasonal fruit. Right. And so, if a family eats the same, they're going to have the same diseases in this case here. Mm -hmm. So, genetics aside, it's the family that brings in the right foods. I can't guarantee that you're going to live to 180, 200, whatever, if you eat perfect for your genetics. But... You will have a better chance of living longer. Right. And it's all about the yeah, odds, the statistics. And the quality of life will change. Yeah. Absolutely. Struggling with excess body fat, decreased cognitive function, decrease in physical performance, decrease in happiness, it's not necessary. You don't have to live that way. You don't have to have to go through those changes. You can choose never to encounter this in the very first place. 
And if you are going through this now, you don't have to keep struggling with it and yo-yoing the entire time. So that's why I'm saying diets don't work. Lifestyles do. That sounds like a title for a book that's being written. <laughs> Cheap pop! <laughs> Look for it by the end of the weekend. <laughs> no, not by the end of the weekend, but yes, that book with the title, something like that, is currently being written here. So, we got the pop diet in front of us here, and let me go through a few aspects of it. Yeah, we'll just talk about, see what we agree, what we disagree with, and realize we just chose the pop diet, but we already stated parts of this is very similar in almost any given right. fad diet. So, so there's so. a weight reduction induction phase, as they call it. So, in a lot of these diets that are temporary, they have different phases. You go through your 30-day detox cleanse, as in some diets. And then you go through slowly introducing whole foods to it. We all know by that time you're wanting... It, Papa John's commercial comes on. You don't care what the pizza tastes like. You're ordering like the special and killing it. <laughs> and on the way home, there's Dunkin' Donuts. You might as well pick up a 12-pack on the way because you're going to want some more in the morning, obviously, with no, that you, sugar You crush. already ate bad, so might as well just continue. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's about a lifestyle of changes. Your body is going to be what you eat. So they talk about eating protein, four ounces of lean poultry, fish, beef, or eggs, with a serving of vegetables or serving of fruit. All right. The only caveat I'd have on that one is when it comes to eating the lean meats, if you're having an end grass-fed, I want it fatty as possible. You want those good fats in you because it's been shown end grass-fed, free-range animals do have a higher amount of omega-3s, even more than some fish. Drastically different. Yeah, it's all the research is being done on the cooped up, grain fed. Even if it says organic, it's still organic grains. Yes. It's pro-inflammatory to them. You're getting high amounts of arachidonic acid in you, and any of the toxins that they pick up, it's all stored in their fat. So you're going to want to make it lean if you're eating crap food. If you're eating good food, which I will admit, it does cost a little more, but it's investment in your health. And if you're willing to make that investment in your health, then what better investment is there? As to give to your descendants or giving to the hospitals and the doctors, yeah. the money is doing no good flying out there. If you want to hold on to the money, then make that investment in you. Just saying. Yeah, and most get a greater return. Most priorities are done when you're dead anyway, so you might as well keep <laughs> trying to live a little longer and healthier. It's now, really... now, the functacular part it says grains or dairy may be used as protein for breakfast. So, anyone want to hit on this, or shall I just talk about some pro inflammatory stuff going on here? Plus, getting yourself out of a ketosis state that you're in while sleeping that's leading to a fat burning. Sure, let's bring up some Cheerios. Um, <laughs> Glycosyxphosphate. Thank you, Monsanto. I'm up on a soapbox today just attacking. But well, it's fun. Well, we'll give you something else to attack. We'll throw out how uh, you know, Cheerios still says how it's proven heart healthy to lower cholesterol. Just give you more fuel to add into this next round. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> flabbergasted at this point. This is like there's a tipping point. So just every food he mentioned that you can eat for breakfast are all known to be pro-inflammatory in almost all of us. Mm -hmm. And yogurt. Uh, Don't eat yogurt. But the sugary yogurts. I mean, true yogurt is very, have. very sour. That's why mm -hmm. there's sweeteners added to it. Right. That's why they add natural 12, flavorings. 15 grams of sugar to yogurt. There's up to 30 grams. And high fructose corn right. syrup in your yogurt? Come on now. <laughs> Seriously? This yeah, is there's 2019. That much. And that's, why in the world It's all the there... colorful stuff so the kids are gonna eat it. Mm -hmm. You want some purple yogurt. I mean, we know yogurt doesn't come purple. You want to add some. <laughs> you take the sour sour yogurt, which our eldest loves, and she makes her own lemon yogurt. That's with, sweet. Huh? Yes, that is very sweet. I mean, if you need something, absolutely have to have some sweet. I recommend the Steviva. It's monk fruit and stevia mixed. Is it pure sugar? No. Is it zero glycemic? Yes. Are there harmful chemicals? in there that are going to alter your gut microbiome or be on the government's list of potential carcinogens. <laughs> yeah, potential carcinogens. Um, I always love that one too. Everything that's labeled potential. They, they won't say it's been proven. Sucralose, weapon of mass destruction. Yeah. Pentagon. Yeah. I mean, but when you are sleeping, your body is going through gluconeogenesis. It is using your body's fat producing ketones to be utilized by your brain and the rest of your body for fuel while you sleep. When you get up in the morning, the second you start having foods that have anything registered up on the glycemic index, it's going to stop that. It's going to shut it down. In this case here, 
pro-inflammatory items that are high in sugar and carbohydrates, such as grains and dairy, are going to get you out of that. So if you are going to have carbohydrates, which, yeah, Mr. Keto himself, Jim, is saying, yeah, you do need some carbohydrates, have them later on the day. Let your body carry through the morning. Let your body carry through early afternoon before you start introducing it. It helps you, even if you're doing some type of intermittent fast, it helps with this. And you'll notice the cognitive functioning really does improve. 100% it does. Um, another thing on here, oh, let me go back here. With a lot of the things that we bring up here, there is lab testing, there's food sensitivity testing, there's the wheat zoomer test, as it's being called, um, the inflammatory markers. Again, with the food sensitivity test, you can't stress how important it is knowing what foods are pro-inflammatory for you versus not. You may be eating cinnamon, for instance, the Celion cinnamon, which has been shown to help not only curb appetite, but lower insulin levels. It's supposed to help keep your glucose levels lower in the body. It's phenomenal stuff, but well, I, what if your body is pro-inflammatory to it? Yeah. Or allergic. I remember when our youngest was small, and yeah, she, she had a reaction to cinnamon. And you don't know that unless you get tested. So get tested. And it does change. So every year, I mean, you get your labs done every year for your regular... CBCs. Exactly. So on top of that, make that little investment. It's not that much. It's, like it, a, it's more than worthwhile to know couple hundred what bucks. you should be eating. I mean, yeah. changing... Uh, you might be spending a couple hundred bucks every couple of months on food that's making you pro-inflammatory anyway. Right. So you wouldn't know. Like I had a friend who took the test and found out nightshades, peppers, eggplant, tomatoes. Uh, she took those out and all of her eczema went away. Never would have thought that yeah. green and bell peppers was yeah. causing inflammatory And she's probably just eating that in a salad oh, here and there. All the time. I mean, hibachi. <laughs> I mean, how many people would say bell peppers, tomatoes are unhealthy? I mean, of course. I sure as heck. You want tomatoes. all the most colorful stuff. Uh -huh. So you're getting the green, you're getting the red, you're getting the yellow. You're... Eggplant, from, you know, purple from the eggplant and everything. And she had to take those out and she got healthier just because her body, for whatever reason, caused an inflammatory autoimmune reaction. Did not know until she was tested. Absolutely. Now, it talks about all vegetables to be consumed during the induction. So, why don't we just introduce all vegetables all the time? Then we talk about carbohydrates. Vegetables have a carbohydrate. So, vegetables all the time, of course they could. And it says, except corn, carrots, white potatoes, and beets. And all fruits except bananas, raisins, craisins, cranberries, <laughs> and mango. Now, yeah, they're on the higher glycemic index. And I get that. Corn, you're not absorbing anyway. Carrots, slight moderation. White potatoes, yes, spike up that insulin. Beets, spike up that insulin. It, it is. Yeah, no, I, love I know, I love beets. But. but, you know, it's about moderation. And that's something I'm going to get into here. If we discuss the keto diet, or keto lifestyle, I should say, you know, eventually there is some thyroid dysfunction. And thyroid is attached to liver when it comes to a lot of different uh, conditions and symptoms. So to keep the thyroid and keep the liver functioning properly when you're living a ketogenic lifestyle, from time to time it's okay to have some carbohydrates to be introduced, especially later on in the day, to have proper function, help you sleep better, help with your metabolism. It's amazing when I start adding some carbohydrates, I would literally sit there and I'd start sweating for no reason. I'm not talking about hot sauce. <laughs> my metabolism was kind of kicked into high gear a little bit. It did. It made a big difference. Huge, huge difference. And I found the myself gotten far leaner, uh -huh. believe it or not. You know, I was saying fat, 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 great. And then I started noticing, okay, my body's starting to not be as shredded anymore. So I had a few carbohydrates, still the same amount of food I'm eating every day, and all of a sudden the shreds start happening again. So again, it's a lifestyle. It's all about moderation. You know, a ketogenic yeah. lifestyle I'm a fan of. But at the same time, over abundance of one thing, keto was developed for Caesars. It is a medical treatment type of diet. Keto greatly helps with concussions and overcoming concussions. Due to the reduced inflammation. Yeah, Correct. A lot of it came stem from uh, the swank diet, I think they call it. It's pretty much where keto, at least I can see, got a lot of its grounds from. Yeah, it was neurological protection. Mm -hmm. Seizures, tremors, MS. Absolutely. And it's... And no, no, if you do have a too. disease, yep, do that as your pharmaceutical treatment. If you want to go au naturel, phenomenal. Obviously, consult your physician, <laughs> but it's about moderation. Everyone talks about, yep, it's all about moderation, but let's do it. Are you moderating anything? <laughs> <laughs> it talks about fruits, and really, 
the berries are the ones that are the richest in your nutrients. It's the richest in your polyphenols and anthocyanins. Um, say that one time fast, and I have Not a tough one. Anthocyanins. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, everyone reaches for like apples became the golden child of fruit, but other I, than the peel, it's mostly sugar water. So if I want you guys to go away, do I just go grab that apple in the fridge and Keep start eating it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Peace out, yos. I used to sound smarter. <laughs> <laughs> the darker the berry, blueberries, blackberries, Mulberries, even strawberries right. are good. Yeah, m- mulberries. You know, a handful of these, and again, elderberries. It, yeah, elderberries Ooh, are phenomenal. Yes. These are the richest ones, and they have a lower glycemic index. You know, a handful by your age is a serving size. I had a fun talk with our daughter Athena the other night. <laughs> Shantae picks up the thing of organic blueberries, and uh, you know, Athena's sitting down. She loves berries, so she's. Eating them and... One bag serving, huh? Yep. (laughs) I looked and said, Athena, I want to have a little bit of fruit for uh, dessert tonight. And, uh, okay, Daddy, there's like ten of them left. (laughs) It was nine. Oh, excuse me. She saved you a serving. (laughs) So I sent her for an adult portion. Typically it's a half a cup for a serving. And she had like four or five servings in there. But for her, she's smaller, so it's a handful. Whatever she can grab in her hands, a serving. And for the summer, I told her three servings, but typically two servings of fruit. Because of the high sugar content, the amount of nutrients found in fruit is not that much, people. It's when it's very concentrated form, you'll get a lot more nutrients. But if you're just having fruit on its own, it's really mostly sugar and water. And sprinkled in with those wonderful nutrients that are in it. You know, the acai is phenomenal, but it's still high, high, high in sugar. So how much How much is too much? You know, these juice fasts and cleanses, it's sugar water with some nutrients. There are bars out there. We'll throw in agave instead. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) So if you're going to do a fast like that, have some water and a multivitamin. It doesn't... Lemon water. (laughs) Exactly, lemon water. Um, But we're getting a little off topic, which we do. We're just a red shiny ball. (laughs) Uh, All foods are grilled, steamed, baked, or sautéed. Okay, however, with the sauté, let me tell you, if it is a food that is going to be high in toxins, you don't want to saute it because you're just sauteing it in its own toxins. If you're going to saute it in a vegetable oil, which is going to most likely oxidize, you're now sauteing it in oxidized oil. No. No. Slap yourself in the nose. No. <laughs> <laughs> As for being on the grill, um, the char on it is a proven carcinogen. It does 100% cause cancer. It looks really cool when you have those black lines across it. Those black lines 100% cause cancer. Go ahead, Mom. Tell me. Yeah, everything causes cancer nowadays. Yeah, just avoid it the best you can. <laughs> just just saying. And that's not really what she sounds like. But <laughs> that's what she says, I promise you. <laughs> My big thing on it is the uh, always cooking part. I mean, for the most part, I mean, I'm not going to eat straight up raw meat for the most part. But, you know, like... <laughs> For the most part. But, you know, like with certain uh, vegetables, yeah, when you cook certain things, like uh, tomatoes is a good one, even though it's a fruit. Let's not argue that one on my own. Okay, cool. I mean, for the most part, cooking can pull out some more nutrients and other things, but you do end up start killing some of the flora and the probacteria, especially on vegetables. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I do prefer cooking my vegetables, but I wouldn't say you have to cook them. There's definitely talk- some pros to There's blanching. Yeah. Yeah, and when we talk about tomatoes, you just brought up blanching. Mm-hmm. We can get into a quick uh, tangent on the lethotins. So, in... Yeah, I'm going there for a second before I move on. But in fruits and vegetables, the skin and the seeds have an innate sense to get rid of predators. It doesn't want to be eaten, believe it or not. So it gives off, it has lethotins in it that is going to ultimately over time cause cellular dysfunction within the body. So when it comes to tomatoes, yeah, blanch, get the skin off, get rid of the seeds, and eat the pulp inside because you're going to be safer with that. Part. Yeah, and that goes for pretty much all of the fruits and vegetables. So keep the pectin best you can because we know that's where the nutrients are, mm-hmm. and that's what makes it tough. Like with apples, if you get rid of the skin, while it's got the wax on it, yeah. and it's holding all the toxins, it unless you do the stuff, Mike experiments, which work. Right. Yeah. So that's where the berries are a much safer choice in that when it comes to fruits, and then blanching some of your vegetables and vegetables that don't have it. Absolutely. Um, eat two... Excuse me, eat three meals and two snacks a day. Do not skip meals, but you can skip a snack if you're not hungry. What is the difference between a meal and a snack? Yeah, I know there's been times I have a snack and 
Well, usually my snacks are the same size as meals, let's be honest. You know, you go have a snack and then mm-hmm. go and grab, you know, three hamburgers. <laughs> but I was always hungry for three burgers, you know, it's... I just had a thing of pork rinds, freaking delicious, but was that a meal or a snack because I ate the whole bag? Cal- calorically, that could be considered a meal. Macronutrient-wise, that could be considered a meal. Yeah. My guess is they're going by time. Is it breakfast? Is it lunch? Is it dinner? Mm-hmm. Or is it something in between? I'm not a big fan of that, but... Plus, as we've reviewed on you previous podcasts, which I can find, I'll put a link to it, eating five, six times a day small meals versus three meals versus two meals a day doesn't matter. Your body just needs nutrients. Unless you're an elite athlete looking for that tenth of a second, it's not going to be noticed on, by you on a regular basis by any means how many meals you're eating per Patient day. Patient metabolism doesn't even slow down until about three days of not eating, so the order, Correct. the time that you eat doesn't matter. And even then, it's not a long-term change in metabolism. And that's when true autophagy eat. kicks in at that 72 hours there. Yes. And now your body is in the mode of preservation. It's going to get rid of what it doesn't need. It's going to keep what it does need. It's going to get rid of all the senescent cells, and thus your metabolism has to slow down just to stay alive in that case. Try to eat slowly and enjoy your food. I'm good with that, you know. Sit down. Don't walk around. Exactly. Let the amylase and your saliva mix with the food, start the digestive process, properly release the pancreatic enzymes to digest your food properly. It should be an experience. It should not be an obligation. Exactly. Enjoy your food. Experience your food. Befriend your food. Uh, yes, I'm going to hug my pizza later. Request <laughs> <laughs> pizza? Yeah, I, I left half of it from last night. After that nine-mile run, for some reason, my stomach didn't want to eat anything. Oh, so you can have it as a snack today. Yes, I will have two slices as a snack with some chicken on top and garlic powder. Organic, of course. It's delicious. Ooh. Um... Yeah, try to take 30 minutes for meals, 20 minutes for snacks. Again, how big is your meal? How big is your snack? I know I'm getting particular about this, but just sit and enjoy. If my snack's a couple spoonfuls of nut butter, that's not going to take me 10, 20 minutes. Here's an idea. If you're swallowing whole chunks of food, you didn't chew enough. You're not enjoying (laughs) your food. If it's a nice mix of bolus that's going down, become kind, then you're good to go. Doctor terms. (laughs) Try not to eat after 7 o'clock, they say, and uh, we were yeah. talking about this before and didn't want to talk too much about it, because if we talked about it, we'd have nothing to say. Plus, we already did a whole podcast on this. All right, so what did we say in the podcast? So, right away, disagree with the whole 7 o'clock. It is much more, okay, kind of what you said before the show is, let's say you go to bed at 1, p- 1 a.m. compared to 9 p.m. or 11 p.m. That's a huge difference in your last meal at 7 o'clock, you know, mm-hmm. two hours, four hours, six hours. All the research showed is that if you're going to eat, it's not within two hours of bed. And you even brought up the point, which on both the show and earlier today, is what if someone's hungry? What if you just worked out? Then it, the reason why you don't want to sleep for, there's multiple reasons. It does throw your metabolism a little bit. It doesn't let you sleep as well. But if you have to eat, with you want to keep within 200 calories and one macronutrient, preferably you know some sort of just fat source or just mm-hmm. protein source. I promise but you. Well, seven o'clock now. Within two hours of bed, you shouldn't eat. Right. If you can, that's but where it makes a difference. Otherwise, the hundred percent dark cacao before bed. Not only get the magnesium, get the polyphenols. Got happy tummy. Happy tummy. <laughs> happy smile. I'm hungry before going to bed. My metabolism fast. Within two hours, I'm hungry. I'm gonna lie in bed, stir, toss and turn, wake up Shantae. And she's not going to be happy. But a piece of that, it falls under the 200 calorie mark, and I sleep sound. So that whole trying to eat after 7, and also what time are you going to bed at night? What time are you getting up in the morning? If I go to bed at 1 uh, a.m., I might not be eating dinner until 9 p.m., and that's still more than fine. That's mm-hmm. well within those two hours. You have to fit your lifestyle. This is a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Right. This is not a one-size-fits-all. Exactly. And if you're going to be intermittent fasting, sure, it helps to not eat after 7 p.m., However, if you go to bed at 9 p.m., it helps a lot more. <laughs> but if you're not going to bed till 11, 11.30, that's four, four and a half hours. I'd be going to bed hungry. Right. 100%. Then you're going to be sleeping for, let's say, eight hours. You got 12 right there, a few more to go. It's a lifestyle. It's a preference. See how you're feeling. See how you're doing here. Use nuts in combination with fruits and vegetables as snack foods. Love it. I mean... Ambulance. If you can eat nuts and your body can break them down, nuts and seeds proper digestive function. Exactly. Look at for the sodium content and any of the sugars because there are sugar. I mean, 
look at holiday times. You can't just find yeah, nuts. They're cooked you or got, they're roasted or they're right. unsalted. Pecans mm-hmm. are just But in general, done the right way. Yeah, nuts and seeds are fantastic, especially yeah. very nutrient dense. And especially when you come to pistachios, if you like pistachios, mm-hmm. again, another food high in polyphenols. Phenomenal, phenomenal. You wouldn't think about that. Um, stay away from peanuts, which I know are legumes, best you can. Again, lecithin and the cellular function as a result. Tough to say no to peanut butter. Again, all in moderation. But if you can, reach for the almond butter. Um, reach for the pecans. Limit your Brazil nuts just due to the um, high metal content of them. Again, pistachios are amazing. Again, personal preference. So funky part here. No bread, pasta, or rice during induction phase. Okay, I'm cool with no bread, pasta, or rice pretty much any time. Yeah, I'm still stuck on the different phases, but we'll leave that High, away. high glycemic mm-hmm. uh, response to it. Whole grains, such as oatmeal or cereal, are acceptable for breakfast. So they just did a 180. Yeah. So here we are with pro-inflammatory stuff again. What's well, where they mentioned just earlier about, you know, like, oh, don't want to eat sugar, but eat granola. Mm-hmm. I, it is still sugar, everybody. Like, I feel like we're going to start restating what we did 10 minutes ago. But then again, whole grains will be introduced in the maintenance phase. It just said you can have it for breakfast. I'm confused. And you read it, uh, you can find something that makes you happy in there, and it might, it's probably part of the marketing. It's right. Limit dairy during induction phase because dairy may cause bloating and allergies to many people. Dairy mostly is pro-inflammatory in most people. Just get the simple during allergy test phase. on. Right. Yeah. A glass of milk, no matter what type, is going to have 12 grams of sugar right there. Is that the type of sugar that you want, or do you like a nice couple handfuls of blueberries for your sugar? A little bit of Halo Top ice cream is a treat. A regular scoop of regular ice cream. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to have it as opposed to a regular glass of milk. Um, it's, again, personal preference. Not a huge fan of dairy. The cassian content has been shown to be cancer-forming. We've done a show on this, too, I believe. But... I know a lot of bodybuilders, especially, will have cassian oh. right before bed because yeah. it's slow digesting. I get that. And in the laboratory, it makes sense. But if you're having a pro-inflammatory response or you're slowly but surely mutating your replication of genes, might not be the best thing to reach for. So... Get your food sensitivity test done and see if dairy is right for you. If you are one of those that tolerate dairy well and it's not pro-inflammatory for you, well, let's just watch the sugar content and have it at the right time. I mean, there's nothing better than some cheeses with your wines. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Again, in limitation, polyphenol content. But if we want to go there, then I guess alcohol is a neurotoxin. There's always, as we keep going back and forth and back and forth, there's one thing that's good. There's another thing not good about it. But if you're it's moderation, like a chess match, but if you drink a, a couple glasses of wine or a bottle every night, yeah, you're going to have some problems. If you have a glass or two on the weekend, or if you have a small glass, like reasonably sized at night, it's not going to significantly impact you. But you got to be able to step at that small glass. Have moderation have a few ounces because even when I pour it no serving size says five ounces right no I mean (laughs) I'm just gonna have one glass it happens to be a 64 ounce glass but it's one glass exactly we've all seen those glasses where the whole bottle fits in it looks like it's one glass (laughs) but I in my small glass that I have it's really a glass and a half in the glass the goblet that Shantae has it's really two to two and a half glasses in there each time. One pour. Which is great. <laughs> Shantae is one pour and I feel really cool that I'm just finishing off the entire bottle, but... <laughs> small portions initially. Um, how about small portions for the most part, unless you're having only two meals a day to get your calories in? Eat until you're full. Right. I really enjoyed when I did the 300 calories like every three hours. Mm-hmm. That was a great fit for me. I am small framed... I don't digest a lot at once. I can't sit down for a big meal. It's just not right, right for me. Eat. I, I love it lately how you've been doing that because I now get the second half of your meal. I'm still hungry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I limit what I eat a little bit, and then I get the rest with Shantae, all nice and tepid. I'd say that 300 meal, I would, never, uh, I would not work. <laughs> Nothing like a style, cold half a so. burger. <laughs> <laughs> um, they talk about low-fat dairy. We talk about remaining high-fat. We don't in our society get enough fats. People are still scared of fats, even people that are more educated on it. A ketogenic lifestyle 
has higher fats. Paleo, higher fats. Mediterranean, higher fats. And people talk about good fats. Really, all good fats mean is no Frankenstein fats, no trans fats. But when it, people think fat, they still think of deep fried and mayonnaise, like for the most part. Right. And, Crisco. Right. Yes. Right. Right. And when you talk about mayonnaise, okay, we have egg yolk, right? And we have olive oil. If you get a good, deep, rich in, I love the word now, it's my new word, polyphenols, green olive oil that's got that bitter bite to it, mm-hmm. so it's really good and it's pure. And you've got a free range egg, a chicken that's been allowed to go out and eat the bugs. And. You know, it's a good high quality. What is wrong with it? It's when you're adding all the extra trans fats and all the extra additives and the colorings and the dyes and that's where it all becomes bad. When you talk about high fats being bad, people still think certain saturated fats are bad. But as we all know from a biochemical level, it's far more stable than an unsaturated fat. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it cannot oxidize as unsaturated fats too. Believe it or not, these unsaturated fats that are good for you at a high enough uh, heating point going to oxidize and become rancid. No good, people. It's going to mutate your genes at that point. And you have enough of them, and that's where the cancer is formed. So you think you're having this great lifestyle and eating and doing all the right things, but it's just misinformation that you've got. So listen to this information. I implore you and tell a friend. Drink plenty of water. We are talking about this before. They talk about drinking eight ounces of water before each meal and snack. It's going to make you feel fuller. It does. Mm-hmm. I mean, Especially if you say minimum of 10 8 ounce glass servings for this one, which is, you know, usually you're the 8, eight mm-hmm. ounces, which is all just kind of, honestly, it's all BS anyway. They've All the studies show that there's no way to tell, but it, every individual is different. Where do you live? How big are you? Men, female, high active. But it kind of shows a gallon, less than a gallon is not enough for anyone. They just started yeah. the 8 8 ounce because it's easier to remember and figured most people could abide by it. Right, and a lot of people can fill up the gallon container and mm-hmm. chug the gallon container, and if it's gone by the end of the day, they drank their water. Mm-hmm. It's an easy way to remember, and a lot of people do walk around dehydrated. I know personally, people talk about being uh, what hangry. Was it? hangry. Hangry. I don't get hangry as I get dehydrated. Oh, I, I just see your voice. I get hirsty. Hirsty. I get hirsty. Oh, hirsty. But I don't, you, <laughs> a lot of people, you don't even realize you're hirsty if you're thinking about other things. I mean, when I came home last night, it was what, 10 o'clock, which I'm running with the bats and the flies that are pounding me in the head. And I literally had sweat dripping off the bottoms of my shorts. My shirt and shorts were that soaked through. I know I got home and I immediately drank a thing of water. I drank a thing of um, essential aminos as well. So I had two of those things. When I went to bed and then for dinner, I had a Zevia. Uh, ginger rail zevia, which is delicious. When I went to bed, I'm lying there and I'm realizing I'm still thirsty. Yeah. So, go to drink some more. I'm sure I didn't have enough still at that point. And what I've been doing today, pounded a couple things of functionized coffee, <laughs> a thing of green tea, still not getting the water into me enough. I'm going to go out and do another uh, little uh, double DT wad to get ready for. Oh, nice. It's nice when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> so it's essential and a lot of people go throughout the day without even realizing it but we're 60% water your brain needs it to function properly you cannot make those executive functioning decisions mm-hmm. when you're not hydrated yeah. but almost no one I think drinks enough pretty much as you said like not like I've met okay I've measured I, I lose very frequently two to four pounds of fluid in just a single workout I mean I sweat like crazy of course so I mean realize that's you know let's say four pounds of it that's already your eight eight ounce glasses of water for a day. I just sweat out in a forty five minute workout. Absolutely. So I mean, where it comes down to is, we're not drinking enough. Almost none of us are. And think about the kids specifically. What oh, do you yeah. send them to school with? You know, are you sending them with Capri Suns? Are you sending them with all these high fructose corn syrup drinks? What are you giving them after the sports? Are you giving them Gatorades mm-hmm. full of sugar? Yeah. Pay attention to what you feed your kids. And you want them to perform better in school, give them water. And there's something at least refillable, you know, because mm-hmm. otherwise, right. if that's all they drink for the day, 12, even if it is water, 12 ounces of water is not enough for anybody yeah. for a day, especially the kids running around. The spectacular part is even when we fill up our kids, well, I'll say you fill up our kids' uh, metal containers, yep. oftentimes they come home and it's still full. I'm like, did you not have any water today? Nope. And what do they, they, cranky as anything when you get home. so cranky. And first thing, 
Have water. Wash Sit your down. Hands. Yeah, wash your hands and face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wash your hands and face and drink some water. And drink the water there. And they do. And over the next hour, hour and a half, they get back to be normal. But, right. you know, that's something to train yourself and your kids, if you have any children, to do. And just stay hydrated in that and be on your kids about Especially now teaching the them. Especially summer food. coming up. Summer's here. Summer is Summer's here. Summer's here. And it's humid. And it's hot. No matter where you are. It says wean from sodas, sugar-free drinks are acceptable. When it comes to sugar-free, again, stay away from those artificial sweeteners of sucralose. If you need this sweet, do look, not do look for this. Look for the stevia and the monk fruit. Some of them are pretty decent, but when it gets all the natural flavorings and you don't know what's in it, but yeah, that Splenda, Oof. the saccharin. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it's really, really, really a detriment to your microbiome, and actually been shown to start to. Um, increase um, occurrences of diabetes. Mm -hmm. My brain's not working so good. I'm probably dehydrated. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do like the Zevias. I'll give them that. But other than that, there's really nothing good that comes from soft drinks. Yeah. And the sugary juices. You get far more from an actual piece of fruit, the berries and stuff, than you do from the extraction of the juice. Um, exercise at least 30 minutes a day. Here's the part that I get to me. Well, one for exercise 30 minutes a day. We all know about the Fit Lab. And you don't exercise 30 minutes a week in the Fit Lab and still get results. But if you're not in the Fit Lab, you need to move. Yeah. Let's talk general exercise, yeah. what most people do. Right. You need to move. You need to walk. You need to ambulate. Do something somewhat strenuous, moderately, for 30 minutes a day. It's a given. Can I get a nerdy study on this one too? I'm asking permission, we're going to do it anyway. So, well, the studies that show 30 minutes, especially they're talking directly for heart health, mm -hmm. like 30 minutes of moderate exercise. Again, studies have proven that's actually not enough for most people. When you're talking the moderate exercise, it's actually closer to that 75 to 90 minutes. But again, the majority of the population wouldn't do it, so they dropped it down to 30, lowered the bar, and still... People are having problems with that, but I mean, 30 minutes is not for your standard type of exercise, Correct. that moderate intensity, the research that they're doing showing that's not enough anyway. Turn off the TV, do some <laughs> jumping jacks, I mean, seriously. Or do jumping jacks while watching TV, or at least. Yes. I mean, seriously. I mean, I mean, these are all ideas, but we need to make them realistic. That's the biggest thing. Can someone walk around the neighborhood? Yes. How fast are you walking? If you're walking in negative miles an hour because you're walking a slow dog and allowing it to stop every two seconds, that doesn't really count. And I get the busy lifestyles, and that's why the Fit Lab is so unique, because you stop in the middle of the day, you stop in before the end of the day, and you get it in. And, I mean, the technology in there is remarkable. Yes, I don't want to sound all of us preachers, you need to do 30 minutes a day, because we do ourselves. I know it's not realistic for everybody, so get in the lab, um, ask for recommendations, because there's also something to be said about just running around with your head cut off and not knowing what to do. You don't have to join a gym, but then what are you going to do? And if you join a gym, you walk in there and you got all the equipment, yeah, but what, what do you do? do? Deer in headlights. Mm -hmm. Then individuals overwork themselves or underwork themselves, and the, there needs to be direction. I always say, I'm not going to do my taxes by myself when they're complicated, because nothing good's going to happen to that. So I get a professional to do that. It's another investment in your health. Invest in a health professional. You know, if you are stricken with, God forbid, some type of disease, are you going to 100% treat it yourself or are you going to consult probably first with a health professional or two to help guide you along the way and work with you? When it comes to working with um, a fitness professional, again, make sure they're competent, know what they're doing, have a proper plan from start to finish, day one, day two, day three, and then find new goals because there's never an end to it. It's just how our bodies are made. Rest, exercise, recover. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and also it says if you're not sweating, you're not working hard enough. So That's not accurate. Uh, <laughs> Again, they're looking back at the general type of exercise. Is that what they're looking at? <laughs> well, they're 30 minutes, I would assume so. If you're not sweating, you're not um, working. So, on Carol... Jim and I can do the exact same workout. Yeah. We could do a wad together, for yep. instance. I may not be one ounce of sweat. Your heart rate's at 90%, 95%. I'm sitting. And they're in puddles. Yeah. I mean, it really is, it's the body, it's the physiology of the body. No two people are going to sweat the same. I get it's more of a mindset trigger, but I like going more by, if it's challenging, then you're doing something. You can sweat sitting in a sauna. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Is that necessarily the workout that we're talking about here? Yeah. 
the weather the way it is, we can sweat sitting outside. <laughs> exactly. Like, seriously. No, it's like, 100%. <laughs> it's humid out, you're going to sweat. You walk around the block once, right now you're going to sweat. If you walk around the block in the middle of December... We're in a mall? Like, where it's, yeah, you're going to be fine. You're not going to sweat whatsoever. So the but you obviously just did just, more effort outside. I get they're trying to say, put some effort into it, but really, that part's bunk. So... Mm-hmm. There's so much technology out there, you can keep track of your heart rate. When your heart rate is yes. at its That's optimal level, measure. you have physiological proof that your body's doing what it's supposed to do. Like we're working with Carol here in our Fit Lab, the world's first artificial intelligent exercise bike. You have two sprints to do. They're 20 seconds each. You've got three minutes in between them to recover. For 99.9% of the people, you don't work up a sweat enough that you need to go take a shower and change from that. However... All research has proven that you just had the equivalent of a 45-minute jog. Yeah. Do it two, three times a week. So no sweat on that, and you're doing 45-minute jogs on there. So moving on. It says vitamins and supplements are a must for losing weight safely and effectively. Uh, what? <laughs> it's a called a supplement. Yes, vitamins and minerals that you get from your foods. You need vitamins and minerals. 100%. Hands down, 100%. You need your essential amino acids every day. If you are in a general state of health and eating well, you shouldn't need much supplementation right. because you're healthy and eating well. That's where if you get the uh, vitamin uh, blood work, vitamin mineral mm-hmm. acid blood work done, you'll be able to know what you're deficient in. You maybe know that you're eating an abundance of something. In an abundance of something like vitamin A, you're going to have toxicity. If typically in a fat side of a vitamin, we're still mm-hmm. figuring out what vitamin D on that one. But... No, not necessarily. It's called a supplement. If you are deficient in something, you supplement with it. What is your long-term goal? If you're an athlete, you may want to supplement with creatine monohydrate. If you are looking to have improved cognitive function for some reason, you might want to supplement with a nootropic. Yes, creatine may be a looking as a good nootropic. There's a lot of other nootropics that are out there. We did a whole podcast on nootropics. Yes. Uh, one milligram of nicotine... Uh, is one of them. There's a plethora of nootropics that are out there in order to do so. Even caffeine, getting your cup of coffee as long as you don't OD it all the time. And caffeine toxicity? <laughs> <laughs> it is a thing. <laughs> I was there yesterday around 4 o'clock. I was drinking coffee and did the math and went, oh crap, let's see how this works out. <laughs> Wasn't my best, but well, it was accomplished. Exactly. So there's a whole big section here just wrapping up on some exercise guidelines, which is very important. And then with specific examples, how to follow, etc., that's all going to go in the book. Um, body mass index chart for the general public, it's great. Shantae, I'm sorry to tell you, but you are now obese. I am technically obese. Congratulations, <laughs> you're going to step up on stage in a skimpy bikini, high heel shoes, parade around in perfect poses, with a six pack, by the way, and you're going to be obese. I will be. Right now, I am borderline obese. I was obese mm-hmm. before I started losing a lot more weight, just um, training for the Spartan endurance races that I have been uh, working on, especially with the monkey bars, because they've been a challenge to me because of sure. weight. My shoulder hurts. Excess weight coming down on it with gravity hurts. Lose some weight, I can be more American Ninja Warrior-ish, and I'm having far more success in my training as a result of it. But I'm still borderline obese because of muscle density. Yep, I'm either overweight or obese based on... Yeah, yeah fat ass. Nice abs, by the way. Thank you. In a very platonic way. I was going to make fun of the <laughs> Yep. <laughs> but obviously with the exercise guidelines, it should be personalized to fit your current needs, your goals. I get that. I agree with that. But again, don't just... Uh, how many times have I said it? Don't get it from YouTube. Don't get it from Instagram. Really sit down with a professional. I mean, I'm biased, but we are professionals here at mm-hmm. Functionized. And I know the job that we do. I have over 20 years' experience as a strength conditioning coach. I have doctoral-level education. Shantae is an absolutely amazing at everything she does. About to be done with a PhD-level education. Corrective exercise specialist. The way she looks up on stage is amazing. The way she looks off season is amazing. I can't say enough about her. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Mike, again, doctoral level education, um, expert on the neurological system, works his tail off multiple times a day as well, knows what he's doing and talking about. Everybody we have here working 
here is here for a reason, a metabolic nutrition expert we have as well with us. So To answer all of those questions that you and come up with. It literally take you through it from start to finish and then keep you going for the rest of your life because we don't like to have a finish. We like to just say there's a new goal involved because why do you want to go and do something you already did again? Unless it was going on vacation to a certain place, but that's <laughs> enjoyable. Don't need to beat yourself up the whole time. And the best thing about it is we're accessible anywhere in the world. Absolutely. We do online. So, you know, we can do video chats and we can create programs and do your peak performance coaching. So you don't have to live near us to work with us. Mm -hmm. Oh, I coach somebody in Finland right now, for yeah. instance, right. from a distance. Mm -hmm. uh, coach other individuals that are too far away. Coach people in New York that are not able to get here every single week. It's what we do and give them the instruction and the guidance, and it works. We talked about already 30 minutes a day, um, not breaking a sweat. Yep, people who exercise while dieting lose more weight. But tell you what, people who live a lifestyle that is consistent to their body and their total health, they're going to be exercising anyway, and it's not about losing weight at that point. You're going to lose weight gradually and steadily until your body hits where it's supposed to hit. And once you're there, once you are where you want to be, people do hit those plateaus, but mm -hmm. once you hit where you're supposed to be, you can live like that forever. It's just about maintenance. So there is a level of maintainability, which, I mean, for the most part, we've all been there. We kind of try mm -hmm. to stay there. It's a point. And it comes it's a lot to new challenges. to maintain when I want to make, than to lose. When you want to maintain but lifting 300 pounds, and you do 300 pounds every day, all of a sudden you're going to fail at 300 pounds. It's going to be 290, 280, 270. So hit that 305. Keep on challenging yourself daily with new challenges. Even if it's, I'm going to read a book this week. There's your new challenge. Read that book. Get a little smarter. Exercise uh, brain. Exactly. People who exercise more keep weight off. People who exercise more are healthier mind, body, just in general. Their brain works better. Diseases are reduced. Um, mental illness is cut down. And pain. Pain, pain. is removed. Mm -hmm. It says physical activity will not only burn calories, but it will increase your lean muscle mass. Depends. If you're Depends a, what type of exercise. Uh, you're correct. doing a cross country? <laughs> no, I was going to say just running. If you're a yep. runner every day and that's your physical activity, you're going to burn muscle mass. It's yep. going to catabolize it. I use that as an example all the time. Like your standard cross country female, they have what I call that skinny fat. Tiny, tiny people, you know, 110 pounds, but they're 35% body fat. It's because they have no resistance training. They're just doing the quote-unquote cardio and pretty much melting their muscle away because they have to use something for energy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, type of exercise, huge part of it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Pilates and yoga are discussed. There's individuals that say they do yoga, and yoga is phenomenal. It improves cognitive function, mindfulness, if done right. If you're doing one of those classes where seven seconds, let's move on, let's do move on, let's move on. Flexibility, balance, it does very well. Right, but, but. We, it's about your yoga. It's about being, yoga is really about concentrating on the position that you're in. It's really about mindfulness mm -hmm. more than anything else. And those that just strictly rely on yoga, there is no increase in a physiological weight. It's on not them. resistive training by any means. You, I've never seen someone, you know, we'll call it, jacked or swole from yoga. <laughs> like, I mean, you're just not. Like, and, and I know no yogi wants to get jacked or swole. However... That's usually what attracts them to yoga. I'll right. Honest, they, everything is their own. However, when you decrease muscle mass, when you decrease brain function, when you... People are always trying to get in touch. When you decrease... You know the funny part? I was actually going to take that out of the room earlier before we started podcasting. Ah. When, mu when you age, muscle mass, bone density, it decreases unless mm -hmm. there's a physiological stress placed upon it. In doing yoga, you're not increasing the physiological stress. So according to Wolf's Law, you're going to lose it. You're not using it, you're going to lose it. Bone density goes down, osteopenia and osteoporosis increases, uh, sarcopenia starts to occur and your metabolic function decreases. All of a sudden, people are starting to pack on those pounds a little bit more. And the reason is, you don't have the extra storage space for glycogen in your muscle anymore. Keep working out, keep exercising, mm -hmm. keep progressing the best that you can. So I love the ARX, uh, because it's going to make sure you constantly adjust and adapt week after week after week. 
it's essential. So it's also the type of exercise. So if you love yoga, do yoga. Yeah, six, seven days a week. Enjoy it. It's your yoga. If you want to do Pilates, phenomenal. But also the resistance needs to be on it's there. And important. more than just, you know what, you can do five pounds a hundred times. It's time to move up a little bit. Yes, you can. It's possible. That's lighter than carrying your groceries from the car. Exactly. <laughs> You know, I know we were kind of picking apart the pop diet here, and you know, like I said, it's not awful. Uh-huh. It's not 100% what I want or how I explain it. That's why I started the book today and popping through pages already. Uh, no Diet Works. It's a lifestyle, tentatively the name of it. And a lot of this is going to be in it, and plus so much more with some different recipes, ways of eating. And I want to keep it realistic for everybody because I get when you're younger, you want to play all day, and that's what you do. Then you start getting to school, and you're sedentary, and they start giving you homework to 11 o'clock at night. Then your sports may stop, you get to college, alcohol is involved for a lot of individuals, you get into the real world after that. Alcohol is still involved, going out, whining and dining people is involved, sitting at a desk, driving, and the time all of a sudden in your mind is gone for eating good and physical fitness, and we start to become deprived of health. Whether you're a vegetarian, great. However, too much of one thing is not good. You know, People that have been vegans, vegetarian, no matter what type, for five plus years, health starts to go down. They don't have that initial effect that they had at first. People that are purely keto, the effect starts going down after a while. It's about that balance. And that's the balance that we're here that I want to help every individual be able to achieve. And variety is another big part of that. When people get used to their standard diet, whatever it is, they tend to eat the same foods that fit their diet. And they te- you know, people tend to forget to expand things, even fit what they want to do, mm-hmm. which is, again, if you're not having good enough variety, you're not going to be eating as much of a mix up multitude of vitamins and minerals, which will also deplete your health over time. 100%. So whatever you're eating, do vary it as it goes. 100%. Yeah, same with working out. You'll plateau. Yes. <laughs> Again, 100%. So we got 100%, 100%, 100%. We got 300% going on here. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. So we've had your ear for quite some time. And next week we're looking to have a very special guest. And you will start to see everything coming out on Instagram. We're going to also encourage you, if you're in the area, to stop by for our podcast next week and participate in it. Hang out, watch, participate as much as you want. It's going to be a lot of fun. So for your mad scientist, Jim, I'm going to give you a little bit of music outro, but (laughs) my voice is out. Beauty Brains Braun is out. And yeah, Dr. Mike will follow suit. He's out. A little something from Team Functionized member Matthew Schultz to close out today.